In this video, I'll be doing a brief introduction to Secure Shell Access or SSH with Groove devices. Specifically, I'm going to be using a Groove Epic Learning Center, but you should know that this applies to any Groove Epic or Groove Rio device. I'll go over the basics of how to get the license, how to activate it and install it on your device, and then finally, I'll go through, activate the SSH server, and run a couple of commands to help you see what everything looks like. In order to get the shell license, come over to our website and purchase this Groove LIC shell. It costs zero dollars, we just need it associated with your account. You can add it to your cart and check out, or contact PCS at opto22.com. Once you've purchased your license and you have the activation key, come on over to manage.groove.com and select activate. Here you'll enter the activation key and select a specific device you want it applied to. I've already done that. So now I can come back and go under manage and you'll see all the devices I have associated with my account. And then you just select manage and you'll see it added right here, shell access license for this device. And this includes any other licensing I have enabled for my particular processor. So I'll go ahead and download the license file. I'll just drop it here in my downloads and I'm ready to go. Now I need to apply this to my device. I'll come over to Groove Manage and log in with my Groove Manage admin username and password. And once I'm in here, we will see that my Groove license is not installed at all. So I can either select that as a shortcut to get to upload my license. But if you already have your license, just select System and come up to License and you'll be brought to this same screen. Here, select Upload License. Come over to where you installed, where you downloaded it and click open. This is now going to drop the license into my device and enable any of the features that it has associated with it. You can see here I now have this feature uh, shell access via SSH. I can click that and it'll bring me to the shell menu. But you can also get to this shell menu at any time from home and system and it's under shell. Now, before I'm able to actually do anything with uh, Shell Access, I will need to create a new user specifically for Shell Access. We strongly recommend that this is a totally different user than any of your Groove Manage users. It shouldn't be the admin login or anything. It should be completely unique. So I'll put in the username user, and I'm just going to use the password test for this video. Then I will need to provide my system-wide administrator password. And this is the Groove Manage admin password. So I'll type that in now. And select Create Account. Now, the first thing that pops up is this Shell Access License Agreement. And I, like I'm sure many of you do, often just quickly go through this and hit Accept. But you should take your time to go through this and read everything that's involved with accepting this Shell License Agreement. One thing to note in particular is that any custom software or changes made to the product via shell access have the potential to interfere with the original functionality of the product and Opto22 limits support for products that have been configured with shell access to factory restore to default only. Now, this does not mean that as soon as you agree to this and apply your shell license that you're not getting any support. It just means that if something goes wrong, for example, if your IO stops working after you've done some changes in shell, we may ask you to get a paperclip and reset your device to full factory defaults just to confirm that it was in fact something you did via shell and not a problem with the hardware. Opto22 stands by their hardware 100%. Just be aware that you can get up to a lot of trouble in shell access. You do have root access to the device, and that can be both very powerful and very dangerous. So just be aware of that and make sure you read through this full agreement. I've already read it, so I'll go ahead and select accept. And now it's starting up the SSH server. Now, this is always running Linux. So all of the commands and things like that that you're going to use are used internally by the device. Now we're just allowing access to that command line. So it's going to spin up this server and enable port 22 and open it up so that you can get in an SSH into your device. So I'll go ahead and select OK and let's check out that open port. If I come down here to security and select firewall, down here at the bottom we'll see that shell access is enabled and port 22 is open on every single interface. Now, you may want to come in here and disable access for any of the interfaces that are not secure and only have it on, for example, Ethernet 0. 
Uh, you can also disable this entirely and close the port up. But another way to close this port up is to go back to that shell menu in system shell, and you simply have to select disable. And that will close up the port and it will no longer be open. You should only have the port open while you need access to the device and turn it off when you don't need to get into the shell access. So with all of that said, I now have my license applied, the shell server is running, and I can bring open a SSH client to come into this device. So we'll see here I'm using the free software PuTTY. This is just a really nice convenient client that you can download and it makes it really easy to connect to your device. You just drop in the hostname or IP address. It defaults to the port 22 and SSH, so you just go ahead and click open. You can also save and then load your connection. So here I have mine for Epic Dev, and I'll open this up. Now the first time I do this, it is going to bring up this little pop-up here. Basically, it's just Putty saying, I don't recognize this server, should I trust it? Now I know I should trust this server because it's mine, so I'm gonna go ahead and accept so I don't have to worry about that again. Now here I am at the login screen. So let's just expand this so we can see everything. And here we go. Now I'm going to log in, and it won't be with that Groove Manage admin or any other Groove Manage account, it's with that one I made specifically for Shell. So that username is user, I'll type in the password, and you'll note that my cursor didn't move, that's just for security to hide your password length from anyone, but when I select enter, there we go, I'm logged in, I'm now at the command line, logged in as user, at the device Epic Dev. So now if I do pwd to see what working directory I'm in, you'll see that I'm in a whole folder made specifically for this user that I created. And now I can do pretty much anything I want. And that's both extremely good and extremely dangerous if I type the wrong thing. So let's start really basic with just htop. By typing that in, I can see what all of the cores on my device are doing, how much memory I'm using, and what processes are using the most CPU, memory, etc., how long they've been running for, and more. So this is a really, really useful command. So now with that done, let's just run some really basic commands. So let's just do a basic create a file and run a really simple Hello World Python program. Now I do want to be able to get to any of the files I create, so I can come back over to Groove Manage and use the internal uh, unsecured file area. I can find that under System and Files. You'll see here I have unsecured files, there's no files in here, but it does give me the path internally that it uses, slash home, slash dev, slash unsecured. So let's use that with our shell access as well. So I'm going to change directory into that file end endpoint, which is home dev, unsecured. And if I come here and list out the directory, you'll see that there's nothing in there. It didn't return anything. So now I can create a new file. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a hello.py file. And I can see that's now listed in this directory. And if I flick back over and refresh, you can see I have hello.py and it's currently zero bytes. I've just created it. So now let's modify it and do some really simple code. So I'll do nano hello.py, and we'll just keep it really simple. We'll import sys so I can print to the screen, and we'll just do a simple print hello world. So now that I've created this, we'll save it, and I can view the file here if I refresh this page. Uh, you can see it's now 33 bytes, and I can even open it up right here and download it to my device if I want to. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's do python hello.py, I click enter, and there we go. Hello world, it printed it out nice and easy. So it's that simple to just get into shell and run some basic commands. I wanna take a look at a few more things before we close out, and that most important thing is that you do have root access with the sudo keyword. Now when you type sudo ahead of any command, you are running it as the root user of the device. And this is extremely powerful and enables you to do a lot of things via SSH, but it's also very dangerous. I'm going to use sudo to update all of the package lists that I have for my device. So I'll do sudo apt get update, and this will figure out exactly what I can install on my device using apt get. So I'll click enter and you'll see a warning right away. This is really important. 
um, that you must respect the privacy of others when you're acting as the root user especially. Think before you type, because with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Pseudo is extremely powerful. The root user has nothing holding it back, so just be mindful of what you do as the root user especially. So I'll put in that password, and there we go. You can see it's reaching out to archive.opto22.com and getting all of the packages for my processor, Groove Epic PR1, at the current firmware version 3.4. Now we do manage our own repository so that everything is compatible, secure, and safe with your device, just something to keep in mind, but now my package list is updated. So you can see that you do have root access with the device, just be cautious when using it, and keep in mind you have great responsibility with this power. Now I want to take a look at some resources. We've enabled shell, we've gotten in there, we've uh, ran a couple of commands, so you can learn more by coming to developer.opto22.com. Here in this developing with Groove Epic section that also applies to Groove Rio, you can select that and we have a whole section on secure shell access. You can select getting started with Groove Epic Secure Shell, and you'll see that it goes into the licensing, repositories, and even provides some sample scripts over on GitHub. If I select that link, it'll shoot me over, and you have a bunch of things that you can use to get started, as well as some documentation on exactly what all the files are and how to use them. This is extremely valuable, and we'll be going into it in a bit more depth in future videos. I hope you found this helpful, and if you do have any questions, you can come over to our forums at forums.opto22.com, drop down into your categories, and you can select SSH for SSH-specific topics. This is a great resource, and you're welcome to come over and chat with us. Thanks for watching.